Do you believe that Sierra Space soon enough will emerge as a major force in the industry? Trust me, they absolutely will. They have almost everything it takes to make it happen. Dream Chaser, the most valuable asset. In today's rapidly changing space industry, Sierra Space stands out as a truly exciting player. One major factor that could make it a leading name is their Dream Chaser project. Dream Chaser isn't just some startup venture. It's been under development for over two decades, building on NASA's legendary space shuttle technology and and enhancing it with the latest advancements and modern ambitions. Soon, Dream Chaser could become one of the most powerful vehicles operating in low Earth orbit, LEO. So, what gives Dream Chaser an edge over competitors like Boeing's Starliner or SpaceX's Dragon? While Starliner and Dragon use a capsule design, Dream Chaser is crafted more like a mini airplane, similar to NASA's space shuttle, with wings that offer a distinct advantage during atmospheric reentry. Much like the Orbiter, Dream Chaser can land on a standard runway with minimal specialized infrastructure. This capability is revolutionary in terms of logistics and operational costs. Instead of requiring a naval fleet or specialized equipment to retrieve a spacecraft, Dream Chaser can touch down at most commercial airports worldwide, making it exceptionally flexible and saving a great deal of time. Moreover, traditional capsule spacecraft generate intense G-forces when re-entering the atmosphere. Dream Chaser, on the other hand, re-enters with an incredibly smooth descent, much like the space shuttle. In fact, during NASA's STS-80 mission, astronaut Story Musgrave was able to stand on the shuttle Columbia's deck throughout landing, a feat that's impossible in a capsule. Dream Chaser generates about 1.5 gigabytes during re-entry, significantly less than the 4 gigabytes that astronauts endure when returning to Earth in a Starliner or Dragon capsule. This gentler re-entry is a big advantage for safely bringing back sensitive cargo or research samples from the ISS. Dream Chaser's wing design also offers another strategic benefit, a much wider cross-range capability. Capsules generally have only one landing opportunity per day at a predetermined location, but Dream Chaser can attempt landing every 90 minutes with landing windows covering roughly one-third of the day. This flexibility is especially valuable in emergencies, during poor weather conditions, or when flight paths over sensitive areas require precise timing. Currently, Dream Chaser is being developed in both crewed and cargo versions. Initially, it will handle cargo missions for NASA, but down the line, it's expected to support crewed flights to private space stations once the ISS retires. A key detail to note, Dream Chaser was designed from the start for reuse up to 15 times. This reusability, combined with its lower maintenance costs due to a gentler re-entry, could create significant profit margins. Undoubtedly, Dream Chaser is Sierra Space's strongest asset. However, to dominate LEO, a space company can't rely on a single product, no matter how promising, like Dream Chaser. Sierra Space understood this from the beginning. Their development strategy is comprehensive, covering three critical areas space transportation, space destinations, and space technology applications. In the realm of space destinations, Sierra Space is collaborating with Blue Origin to develop the Orbital Reef Space Station, an ambitious project aimed at creating a commercial industrial park in space. Orbital Reef is slated to launch and become operational within the next three years, with Dream Chaser set to serve as the primary spacecraft for cargo and crew rotation to this commercial station. In addition, Sierra Space is developing the Life Habitat Large Integrated Flexible Environment, an inflatable space module that opens up possibilities for creating spacious living and working areas in space with optimized transport costs. On the propulsion technology front, Sierra Space is following a path of independence similar to SpaceX. They are developing and manufacturing all engines for Dream Chaser and the Shooting Star cargo module entirely in-house. Their Vortex engine line is built using advanced 3D printing, high-grade materials, and innovative methods to maximize efficiency. In satellite technology, Sierra Space made a significant move in early 2024 by announcing its own satellite bus lineup, featuring three models, Velocity, Horizon, and Titan. This highlights the company's ambition to offer comprehensive solutions for space missions. Alongside these developments, they are also advancing space systems and auxiliary technology, particularly environmental control systems, a key factor for long-duration missions in space. Quite an extensive portfolio, right? Sierra is working on so many projects with major revenue potential. But do you notice something's missing? A launch vehicle. Right now, Sierra lacks the capability to launch on its own. In the short term, this means they rely on partners to get their spacecraft and satellites into orbit. But that's a short-term issue, one that could be entirely solved by acquiring a launch company. I'm talking about ULA. Boeing and Lockheed started the process of selling off ULA back in early 2019. 
Frankly, I'm not all that surprised. Historically, ULA held a monopoly in the launch industry, with launch prices soaring above $400 million per mission. That monopoly was only broken when SpaceX entered the market, offering comparable launches for a fraction of the price, under $100 million. The market has completely shifted. The U.S. Department of Defense DOD ULA's biggest client now has many cost-effective alternatives. But ULA can't lower its prices and still maintain the profit margins it wants. Looking further ahead, ULA does have enough contracts to stay profitable and stable for at least the next five years. However, in the long term, the company faces a serious issue, a dependency on external technology. ULA is sourcing BE-4 engines from Blue Origin for its new Vulcan rocket line, exposing a critical weakness. They don't have full tech autonomy. ULA is currently lagging at least two decades behind the industry's technological frontier, and at this rate, they won't have anything new to offer the market in the next decade. However, ULA could be the perfect missing piece for Sierra Space. Currently, in the entire U.S. space industry, only ULA's Atlas V and SpaceX's Falcon 9 are certified for human spaceflight, and ULA's Vulcan rocket is in the final stages of payload certification. Meanwhile, Blue Origin's New Glenn has yet to make its first Flight. Sierra Space's Dream Chaser isn't ideally suited for launch on a Falcon 9 with a standard fairing, which makes ULA's launch capabilities crucial to Dream Chaser's development roadmap. But it's not just about launch access. ULA's tech assets, infrastructure, and experience could significantly accelerate Sierra Space's own launch capability ambitions. If this acquisition happens, Sierra Space stands to become one of the most vertically integrated powerhouses in the space industry. They'd gain control over the entire value chain from launch vehicles to spacecraft and space destinations. This strategic position could help Sierra Space effectively compete with the industry's top players and shape the future of the commercial space sector. The challenge? Boeing and Northrop Grumman are pricing ULA at two to three billion dollars, which is a tough pill for Sierra Space to swallow. Honestly, it's complex for any buyer to justify that kind of investment in a launch empire that's at risk of declining. Many might argue that I'm praising Sierra Space too highly, especially with SpaceX's Starship on the scene the most powerful launch system in human history. Don't get me wrong, Starship is truly the vehicle of the future. No other rocket will be able to haul 100 tons from one part of the solar system to another, quite like Starship. However, for certain mission types, Dream Chaser may actually be a better solution. Let's not forget that Starship was born out of humanity's wildest dream, to conquer Mars and the far reaches of the solar system, to make us a multi-planetary species. Before Elon Musk, not a single soul truly thought about these possibilities. Sierra Space, though, is taking a different path, focusing on LEO. You could say they're painting a more down-to-earth, realistic picture of humanity's near-term future in space. Instead of setting sights on distant planets, Sierra Space is working on building a complete economic and technical ecosystem in LEO one that brings direct, tangible benefits to life here on Earth. This strategy by Sierra Space is truly significant. LEO is steadily becoming an industrial zone in space, hosting scientific research, military operations, microgravity manufacturing, and soon, possibly a whole ecosystem for space tourism. With a product lineup ranging from the Dream Chaser spacecraft and space stations to life support systems, Sierra Space is positioning itself as a comprehensive solutions provider for all activities in LEO. And with this approach, Sierra Space has the potential to become one of the industry's biggest players. They don't need to compete directly with SpaceX in the race to distant planets. Instead, they can establish a leadership role in a fast-growing, highly practical market, commercial operations in low Earth orbit, 